Nice though. It's better that it's sunny. Yeah. Tomorrow I'm gonna actually gonna have my first session head outside. Um, okay. Now while we still wait, we're both early as yeah. the good sign. Um, yes. Welcome everybody. It's the episode 17. <laughs> Who would have known? Who would have known that we went this uh, this long? And today I have a very very special guest, uh, Mr. Jean Paul Paula, a fellow stylist creative director, photographer extraordinaire. Um, could you start, could we start with like you telling the people that do not know who you are, which I will find as a miracle that they wouldn't, uh, no. about who you are, <laughs> what you do, and where are you more scoring to us today? Um, hi, my name is Jean-Paul uh, Paula. Uh, I'm more scoring from Almeida, which is where I grew up. Um, coronavirus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what do I do? Um, I'm a stylist. I started actually as a model when I was 19. Uh, after that, I quickly kind of decided that that's not something that I really wanted to do. do. Um, mainly because people kept doing the same thing over and over and I just found it really boring. They kept making me look like Grace Jones, which is an honor, but no one can do it <laughs> like Grace Jones. So yeah, it became kind of redundant. Um, after that, I started to do styling and at first, just like everyone else, you kind of just do as you can. So you kind of just try and it's trial and error and you find the right good photographer to work with and with models and getting with the right agencies and whatnot. And I did that for years, actually. Um, when I was 28, uh, when I was 25, I moved to Paris. Uh, I lived there for three years. I became fashion director of a magazine called WAD. Uh, I did that for three years and then after I moved back to Amsterdam and kind of this is actually where the work that I'm doing now kind of started. Um, I kind of understood that being black in fashion doesn't really work, uh, at least not the way that I would have liked to work. Uh, and I found myself walking up against doors more than doors opening. Uh, so I really kind of decided to start creating my own work uh, and really start to focus on things that I thought were important. So. Let's see, four or five years ago, uh, me and my photographer friend Florian Johan uh, kind of decided to no longer shoot white people at all, uh, unless it was like paid for or necessary or um, the project called for it. So in my commercial work, obviously I did, but in my personal work, I kind of stopped doing that because at that time, only 20% of all of the models international uh, weren't of color. Yeah, I remember. Uh, yeah. Very, very well. Yeah. I don't know, I came back from Paris and I was kind of disappointed with what I had done uh, and what I had contributed to my legacy or even work in general. Um, I came back thinking that what I was meant or what I wanted to do was not what I could do. So I think as stylists, we're actually artists. We just yeah. choose the medium of clothing uh, to kind of like communicate through. And it takes us a while before we get to, to that point where we actually believe that or that we're allowed to say, oh, look, uh, I'm a creative person and I know my shit, so I could do more than just this. Oh, I've been doing that from the beginning. <laughs> well, there you go. Trouble. A lot of trouble for that, but you know, it's, it's definitely been worth it. Yeah. But it's 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 uh, it's so amazing uh, for you to actually mention Wad magazine because I I was a, I was a model as well. <laughs> oh yeah. For, and oh the my first God. time I actually came across your work, I was sitting in Helsinki, where I'm from, with. Um, a fellow model friend who was a model in Paris and based there, and she was in the magazine in what, oh, like with this redhead haired hair girl called Suvi Elena. And I remember seeing your name in there, and it was around the time of uh, MySpace. Yes. So well, I remember like all of all of the. I didn't know who you are. Oh my god! No, 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 no. Wad, Wad was not MySpace. I was like, what? MySpace? Oh my god! On MySpace, I was like a nobody. I didn't really. I didn't really know what the fuck MySpace was. 
But, but I, mean, I like, but back in the day, those yeah, those true. Of, like outlets, they were they were the only sort of wind, dark window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I come, yeah, on, yeah. I come from Helsinki. It was like this. <laughs> like this. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I, I started doing what when I was uh, I turned 25 that year. So I was 25 uh, when I started that, and I did that for three years. And it was really funny because I bought that magazine when I was 16, and I loved that magazine. I was absolutely blown away by that magazine. So for me to get that opportunity, I was just I was such a full circle moment. It was definitely something that I planned on happening. So for that ha to happen was kind of amazing. Getting there and the horror of being there was something else. But <laughs> you know. Oh. It always is. I mean, if, if I could recommend some things like Young Stylist, don't go to Paris. Just yeah, like, not, don't not do that. It's not friendliest places, that's for sure. No. Think about your, like, um, mental health and your physical health and think about what that would mean for you also in terms of, like, your social... Yeah. No, but I mean, it's like, just, just in general, like, I think that the biggest... Uh, <laughs> Biggest, biggest sort of uh, um, illusion is that what we do is some some sort of like glamorous, you know. The, the times that I've literally wanted to like bang my head against the wall and say like fuck this, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, it, it's been more than the ones that I'm like, oh, this is so great. Exactly. To be honest, so I, I think it's like if if you really like to be a masochist, like come on, join us. You I mean, there's so many of us out there. My current assistants that I work with, um, I tend to try to choose one person to work with in every city that I'm in. Yeah. Uh, I think it's actually important to educate people, uh, to show them what it's like in every situation. So whenever I get the opportunity that I meet someone that it's, uh, do you know what I mean, like worth it to, to bring them along or they feel the need to really want to do that, I try to do that. I'm sorry. My neighbors are talking. No, don't worry about it. Um, uh, and in Holland, I work with a Moroccan girl um, who wears a headscarf. And in France, I work with uh, I work with um, my I mean, he's amazing. His name is Merv. Um, I try my best to uh, make him understand as well that it's not luxury. Like the times yeah. that it's nice, it's really nice, and the times that it's not, it's really not. And he's been there with me through like really horrible shit, so he understands. And to kind of like be so masochistic and want to, that even motivates me even more to just kind of be like, whatever you need, anywhere, ever, just ask. And yeah. I will give it to you any contact, whatever you need, ever. Like I have this type of, uh, I believe it's important to educate, but then also when you do it, show them the real. Don't like, don't yeah, make him a slave, do you know what I mean? That's, that's, the, only, that's the only way, because I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a person that I'm, I'm actually known uh, to never have assistance almost because mm. i don't want anybody um following shadowing me around in the thoughts that that's normal to be not paid or being somebody's boss boy because that's definitely not what i'm all about I'm, yeah. i like the craft i like the fact that you know i do it from the beginning or the end and if i have assistance they are there for a reason and then you know if i'm not getting paid and they want to be there then that's fine but i'm not exactly. getting, like come on go and get this shit for me because I'm no. the no. so, so I'm the worst as well because I, I, I yeah but I, just, I kind of feel like it's my responsibility you know yes, like, they're human beings for, 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 the, for the next um, generation next wave to come that they yeah. don't do that because especially in London like let me tell you the hierarchy here is, is I know I used to live there it's disgusting I mean um, I would say at the moment there are perks in it because I'm black but um, like I look, at, I look at the way that that is being manufactured, um, and I just try to think that I'm ha In one way, I'm happy because a lot of people are eating from it. Like the diversity kind of bill in London has really skyrocketed. I mean, it has been for years. Do people really live to it? I don't know, but it really offers a lot of people who are very young a lot of opportunity. Yeah. Um, I don't know. In just being a model, photographer, or whatever, to do something else other than, you know what I mean. So yeah. I think in that sense it's quite positive, but the actual industry and how it like yeah, it's like it's, it's yeah. sort of like that the, the driving force behind it. Is a bit yeah, you need but to get I, picked. But, like but it's, it's, it's but it's still like you know you know there's I'm I'm a person that I don't believe in in sort of like directly like name dropping and stuff, but there are like this type of a uh, couple of publications currently in uh, UK that are known for being diverse. When the opposite is that the casting director is like book. A, this type of people because it's trendy. I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. to me, that is just. And I still, currently, I have to fight every single time I want to book a black girl or a black boy. I have to fight for it. Like it's like, 
why? I don't. It's so goddamn difficult. I if I stopped to do that, like I literally, I walked away from jobs. I've gone. I've not gone fired. Um, last in 2018, I did a job for the National Opera and Ballet in Holland. Um, they were basically looking uh, for a new creative uh, team to take care of the campaign that they would do for two years. Um, and they asked Florian and myself to do it. Uh, so we wrote them a plan to kind of make sure that they understood that we wanted them to internally also change the way that they work. Because yeah. in Holland, like the UN, it's stated that all cultural um, institutions have to have a certain percentage of diverse people working there. But that's not the case. So I, we kind of hoped by writing this plan where we showed absolute inclusion of the country, um, that we would also invite them to understand that they would have to kind of be like, okay, we didn't do this for the longest amount of time. No, no, really, like just being like, okay, we've been racist for a very long amount of time and now we're open to the idea of acknowledging our past and moving forward. But they were not willing to do that. So we, <laughs> so we, did, we did the entire campaign um, and the feedback that I get from the, um, from the lady who's the head there, she's from Switzerland. Um, she says to me, this is too black. Um, and she was talking about the percentage of um, people that were on the images in terms of the entire campaign. So overall, it was like, I think 55 or it was 60% people of color and then the rest was like white people because the ballet is already completely white. So we were like, okay, let's push for this. Let's show them what the country actually looks like. And they freaked out. They were like, it's really too dark and uh, it's too black. <laughs> and they laughed and it was really one of those situations where in which you sit there and you're, um, and I'm black. And I'm listening to this lady just voicing her um, privilege um, and the thought that that's okay for her to say. Um, you would think that with age or with, with a certain kind of level of work that you do, that you would get into a, a space where people know. You know what I mean? Where they educate yeah, yeah, themselves yeah. and you're like safe. Like being, that's being inappropriate. Like it's like, oh my like, God. Like, like saying to a person like, um, you're, you're too fat. Like it's just kind of like sort of internal things like you just don't yeah. say stuff like that. No. Like you at least think about what you're trying to say and then make that the best way to do it. It's just a white lady being white because the entire time we were presenting them with the ideas that we had and even when we discussed trans people, they would laugh and be like, oh, is that a man or a woman? It's like... But it's, it's, to, to me, to me it's the, the weirdest thing is like, uh, as, a, as a white person, to think that when you think about nostalgia and all of this type of things, everything, all of the white nostalgia is based on the stuff that is being ripped off from the black culture. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, so to me, that is so weird. Like, you see all of these movies, you know, you, yeah. know, you do this biopics and all of that. And then when I see them, and I'm just like, fucking hell, like, that, that's wrong. That's the first thing my, my instinct says, that's wrong. Other people are just like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay, I forgot about it. Exactly. And, I don't know. So, so these. To me, that is just, it, it's just so weird. My partner is black. My second family is black. And then, you know, there's like uncles and aunties, and they're like the children are mixed and all of that and that what i see is the future to be honest i think people who look like me will not exist in a hundred years hopefully hopefully it's all mixed <laughs> you know that's what i think about evolution i mean i think fear of a black planet is really stopping that with in however they can and this coronavirus isn't helping that cause of that no. actually happening no. the water shortage that we're going through as well is also not going to help so you know, like when I look back at history, I mean, I'm in Almeida right now, which is, um, <laughs> it's a suburb of Amsterdam, basically, it's another city. Um, I grew up here. Um, the ground here has been dug up out of the, out of the lake that used to be in the center of the country. Yeah. Um, when I look at the history of where I am and where I was born, um, it's very, very, uh, it's quite the mind fuck to just walk around here and be like, la, la, la. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice. I can imagine. I can definitely imagine that. So the whole, the whole notion of evolution and where we will go really depends on what we do now. Exactly. Um, 100%. Yeah. And I don't, like, I'm, you know what I mean? Like, I'm all up for, like, <laughs> white people can always exist. I don't think that everyone should, uh, I don't think that, I don't think it should be a full-on orgy life <laughs> but um no no i just think like understanding each other's differences would be like a great fucking start yeah and like, to be honest like just to, like look at it like i think the, the greatest thing about humanity is that we're different right that's the nice thing that you have the option of choice. 
Yeah. Like if I, I've, I've never understood the sort of thing. It's like, okay, I don't like milk, so nobody else should like milk or whatever, this type of weird. Um, <laughs> you know, like, because I, I, I believe like children are, <clears throat> they, they are pure when they come to this world and all of them yeah. are taught whatever yes. it is. They're taught to hate, they're taught to love. But if you would put all of the kids in the same room, they're just going to be curious about it, even if you look differently. That's how I see it. But uh, what is, like, I would like to know your thought on um, uh, how has this affected this whole pandemic, you and your work and you as, you know, as a person? What has I mean, affected you? Um, I, I feel like for me, it's a bit of a, a weird situation. I feel like I've I'm really in a luxury position uh, and I have been in quite a long time, uh, for quite some time actually. Um, just in terms of being able to be independent and be able to survive from what I do as well. Um, I was stuck in the Caribbean for two months. So for two months, uh, I was there with family, which was really amazing. It was really chilled and laid back and I got to really like um, ground myself, I guess, in a way. Also because I haven't been there since I was a child, so it was really quite uh, quite the thing to deal with mentally. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> long day, long day. I mean, really. But being on an island during this, being on a place where it seemed really, really safe, only one person died, it, it was very much a relief. Like we lived in fear, but I, I guess not as much as it is here. Yeah. Um, also hearing that some friends of mine might have just had Corona, it's kind of like, okay. Yeah. And in terms of work, um, uh, I'm not. I'm literally writing a plan at the moment uh, for funding, and uh, that's just what I'm focusing on most. Uh, yes, a lot of jobs have been cancelled, obviously across the board, actually. But to be honest, um, I'm not as worried about that as I am about um, just world politics right now. I'm more concerned with what's going to happen than not being able to get paid right now. I'm with my family; they feed me. Like it's really amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even like I'm not gonna lie. My stepmother like is an amazing cook. My dad is a full house of kids. Um, oh, it's that, the most. Yeah, that's I'm cool. not. A, I'm not alone. So, like I said, luxury. Yeah, yeah. that is definitely a luxury. <laughs> yes. Because the only thing what I would want to do is go and see my mom, even though she drives me crazy. But she's in Gran Canaria, so that's gonna be a long time before I can go there. How is um, the situation there? What? How is the situation in Gran Canaria? Gran Canaria is fine. It's like one of those islands that really hasn't been affected. And, you know, Spain has been in, you know, one of the strictest with lockdown. So yeah. uh, that's fine. I'm not concerned about the UK because here, obviously, it's like 28 degrees. People are not respecting anything. So they're on the beach yeah. of that. And I'm just kind of like, uh, I'm, I'm at the point that, you know, even as creative as I've been through during this time, I'm starting to get reached the point that okay, I need some some sort of other things like look at a duck or something. You know, I know what you mean? You know, like some sort of else than upstairs and downstairs. You know, I don't want to feel a bit crazy here. But uh, but yeah, I'm I'm totally on the same tracks with you in regards to work. I'm not really worried about that. You know, it's not. Uh, uh, to be honest, as a Venus stylist, I don't really think that is the most important thing. No, right same. It's, it's been the craziest thing is what's kind of realized, like, okay, the world is ending. I have no skills. I can dress people nice. I can have a full-on conversation with you about dressing nice. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, it was not so much that I thought I don't have any skills, but like, I, I really thought, like, what am I going to do? Like, what if I would, like, have to... Um, really, really, like, stay on the island, for example, or, like, what if we couldn't move anywhere at all anymore? Um, I really started to think about, okay, then what skills do I have? And it really kind of made me try to reassess the way that I'm going to move forward from this as well. This so, needs to be, yeah, this needs to be something that is possible to happen, so therefore I need to have a, a plan. I think everyone is doing the same thing. It's so weird to kind of be like, you literally don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, like, at all, and everyone's in the same boat the entire world. It's like we're in a movie. <laughs> it's really no, but for, for me, it's like it's so weird because <laughs> I'm so used to it. Like I come from a like lower class, you know, working class family. You know, single mom, dad was in jail. You know, everybody who work, works in my family, thought, like my family members, they are truckers, my sister included. So I'm that kid who knows how to do all of the the, the, the manly things, the girly things, <laughs> work in a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> you know, work, work in the supermarket, done all of that, that sort of stuff. So I'm going to be fine. I have a degree on hair cutting. Do not get it twisted, darling. It's the same yeah, so, here. So I'm, I'm that person that I don't I do really not. 
<laughs> I'll make it not the top of the bill. Yeah, no, so, I know what you mean. So, I know. What you mean. So I don't have that have that problem, or like this sort of like to me as a person, it wouldn't be such a big personal demotion if I would have to start doing something a bit less glamorous. Let's. Oh say. no, not at all. But no, just I really meant in terms of survival. I mean, I do not yeah. mind working an odd job at all. I've done all of those things, but just in terms of okay, she's gonna go down. Now. I can't even drive. Can you imagine? I, I don't have a driver's license. No, but that's like one of those things that I'm talking. That's like a skill. Like you need to be. I need to be. I need to get my driver's license now. But at the same time, I don't want to pollute anymore. So I'm a bit like okay. I hope that everyone's thinking the same type of. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, we need to kind of survive this and come up with solutions because the alternative, the race war that's like America's threatening to have, is a bit mental. So yeah. But I think I think it's everywhere. I feel like the whole world in the past couple of years has started to do sort of like reverse. There's no, it's not. It's not reverse. This is the thing that I love to say as well to people. Why people didn't just get more racist or just arrive to be? They were the same before, and it's just the same now. Things never changed. People have been killed forever. Do you know what I mean? Like, how do I explain? Like, I've experienced it my entire life. My parents have, and their parents have. It's like an ongoing cesspool. The only thing is that the difference in the way that it's exposed to us. We don't really see or experience what happens in America, but it doesn't mean that we don't experience the same thing. I experience yeah. micro racism the entire day. I leave the house, white people go. Literally, doesn't matter what I do. Um, and that is, um, it's the same for every person of color everywhere in the world. And if you're gay, it's like extra. It's like, ooh, I'm black and I'm gay. Jeez. Yeah. So it's um, it's. Like to, 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 to see the news in America cover it more, to, um, I think that that's really, really important, but that also has a lot to do with uh, social media, obviously, and the internet. But um, I'm happy that those things are finally pushing through because we needed to see this yeah. from everywhere, really. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah, that's all right. No, <laughs> I'm just taking really real there for a second. No, no, but it's true. <laughs> and, it's, it's, and I think it's very, I think if everything starts that it has to become. Uh, kind of like that we stop avoiding the subject. Do you know what I mean? It's like, exactly. So, because exactly. I think the problem is that everybody seems to have an opinion and then nobody is willing to compromise. You know, I don't care. If, if I have an idea about something and it's wrong, I don't mind if somebody corrects me on it. Mm. But I think the problem is that people have the problem. I was like, oh, who are you to come and tell me? I think the only way to find solutions is, is to discuss about them. Put them, put the cat on the table, start fighting. Support. I mean, for some, no shade, like for some white people, it's just like, know your own history. It's that easy. Like, where do you get the nerve? Like, I'm tired of explaining to, to people how we can get out of the situation when it's so clear. Just stop being racist. It's that easy. It's really, really that easy. But people don't, they, for some reason, they don't seem to understand what racism is. And this is where the privilege thing comes in. Like, when it's kind of blind to them what they're doing, but they're, secretly aware of it i just find it's very very odd like i've always found this very very strange and very odd and it's a very un um it's very unforgiving to kind of try and fight try to fight that if you kind of all, always doing it with the notion that you have to prove it or um you can't just listen to me i'm offended by what you're saying please don't do that don't yeah. talk to me like that please like it's so easy please don't kill me like, yeah, it's, it's that it's it's, it's that it's those are the type of things like when, when I see this kind of happening in my eyes and I see that like the direct effect like differently on my partner. Yeah. That's the sort of thing is like I I am white and I won't be able to turn into any other color. And that's fine. And I'm I always constantly trying to understand what it is what it is. But if for example compared me and, and my partner, my partner is uh, has a, a master's degree in law, you know, did it in Spain, one of the only like black people in the whole goddamn school. And I've always just like like asked him, like, why did you do that? It's like because I think there is that sort of core thing to prove that you know what I can do this, and I have to have something to back it up because otherwise, you know, I'm going to be viewed as this and this and this and that, and which is completely fucked up in my opinion. But I mean, it's like it goes like across the board. Like I don't understand the sort of social narrative that. You have to be something, and if you do not fit those requirements, you're you kind of like human waste. I don't understand that. I mean, it's been normalized for so long. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, Jesus, like, um, 
it's literally been centuries that Europe's been busy with what it's been busy with now. And it's really sad to kind of look back and feel like white people want history. They wrote the history books and they made us feel a certain type of way, which we still feel as well. Like the division that we have within our community is ridiculous. The, um, the self-hate that we have, the self-loathing that we have, and also a really with big step, what has been done is still currently being done to us. Like it's incredible. How do you, how do you, uh, how do you see this uh, epidemic and this sort of very un, um, like uncertain times like making it worse? How do you see it? Like what, what, do you th what do you think or you actually know what is happening now as an outcome? in these societies because I, 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 I've, I've noticed like a massive rise uh, with this like, racial issues, this, um, it just when I spoke with um, Alejandra about trans rights because they're starting to evolve. It's crazy. Like, massive, massive opportunity for the right wing and sort of like uh, yeah. built ra racist to kind of use this as an advantage. Yeah. So what's, um, what's your take on that? Um, I mean, I was trying to be positive about it a few, a few months ago. I did an interview about this and I was like, oh, I'm not pretty sure where things are going so I can't really assess. And I thought like, oh, when this is over, when they finally come out with a cure, we're just going to have to borrow all of us. But kind of like seeing how it's going down, especially in America, uh, where racism is an incredible problem and seeing how they're really kind of like choosing uh, who to save or people with money get saved or whatnot um, it's just mental um, the way that people are dying uh, and all of that is really really crazy as well but that aside how is this playing out it's playing out exactly how it does in every horror movie that we've seen yeah the weakest get hit definitely hardest and it's going to hit them later and not sooner it's going to hit them very very hard but it's really right now about self-sustainability. So I'm really thinking that a lot of countries are going to learn how to take care of themselves within where they are. We're not going to travel as much, which I actually don't think it's the worst idea because of pollution. Um, I hope that we take this, I would, I would hope that we would come out of this socially aware and really conscious of the fact that we're one and we're not spread around. We don't get to shoot whoever we want. We don't get to be racist. We don't get to be misogynist. We don't get to rape women, the whole book. Um, but I think it's going to go the opposite way. When you're looking at rights of people that are being taken away while this is happening, so people have the time to take away trans people's rights. Um, when you look at the way people are being ushered out of the hospital, so who is dying and why. Um, and also the people who actually really live off of the capitalist system that white people have built. So a lot of the Caribbean, a lot of the islands, South America, these uh, places are really in trouble, all of the tourists place are really in trouble as well so um as they would some colony uh, some islands or some countries that are still in charge uh, or still within the kingdoms that they're attached to like Curacao, where i'm from they're getting some type of funding from here but the way that it looks is it is it's going to be a loan so they will eventually have to pay it back and the island where it doesn't have any money so for me it's just like a whole and obviously, you have to think about all of those people, those millions of people that don't have an actual job. They live on the hustle, they live day to day. If they have money one day, they can eat one day. If they don't, they can't eat. So, um, I honestly think that it's going to hit worst case scenario, just in terms of how it's going to be dealt with. If every human life is of value right now, that should count, but it doesn't count. It's an incredible no, amount of segregation. As long as, long as the capitalists, capitalists are going this is never going to end because because i've had so many conversations on a general level about the fact that it doesn't matter a person who would be on the same side as we are how humans are built as soon as they are introduced to a lot of money and power how many of us can actually keep it keep to our like grounds That's i mean honestly i i don't even think that it's something to do with money and power i think it's really just full-on disgusting greed like the amount of stories that i read about artists that used to be famous and the things that they do and the interviews with kids that get abused and whatnot it's just incredible what people think that they're capable of doing once they can but it doesn't mean that everyone does that do you know what i mean i think that i think that certain sick people are just sick from the get-go and if i think about I don't know, like if you think about a Harvey Weinstein, or if you, for me, for example, if I think about white people in general, my notion towards what they might think of me is definitely negative. 
So me going into a white space, I feel threatened. Um, I don't feel safe. Um, and this is my reality. This is reality for a lot of people. So I think that when the, um, I don't know, I think that when you look at the overall situation and how things are going now, I'm hoping for the best. Um, but if we're all supposed to get this, it's really going to hit us hard and some people just won't um, get through it. Um, and with the rules bending and people not being able to get tested, or, because really a lot of people are not able to get tested, this is not that easy to do. Um, it's going to hit us really hard, let alone people who already have diseases that can go to hospitals, people that are pregnant right now. I'm super worried. Um, if you get an STD, like, <laughs> for real. Um, it's a bit of a... Yeah, I, I think it, I think it's like um, for me, my thoughts have definitely gone for for the for the countries like uh, for example Brazil. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh my, well. oh my god. Uh, obviously, like you know, my my mom, is, my mom is in Spain, so in Spain, I'm not worried because the, the health system and all of that works regardless. Mm -hmm. Same same back home, but there and here as well. If I would want to go to a doctor for another reason, I could. But there are there's so many of those in Africa. It's like when that's gonna when everything's gonna be there because it's starting to go in stages, you know. Well, I know for a fact that France uh, they said that they were going to test the vaccines on people in Congo. So they went and they infected people with it to be able to see if they could disinfect them. Well, at least that, 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 that doesn't surprise me. It's like it's, it's as fucked up as what the. So is this is now. like really this is reality. Like yeah, when I said yeah. the, about a movie and all that stuff, like I. Like, I'm trying to, like, I really want to be positive about this situation, but I don't know how. Like, I, um, right now... To be honest, do you have to even have to be positive about something that there, if there isn't anything? The only thing what it is, is to raise awareness to fight against it. Because I don't, I, I've, I've always been the person that's like, you don't always have to be positive just for the sake of it. You know, mm -hmm. if, if, well, why, why would you have to celebrate something that is not great? <laughs> you know this what is I mean? what I think about gay pride. Yeah, say <laughs> The only thing why I go to gay pride is not because I, I can prance around in some like ridiculous clothes. I go because I like to dance and drink. But mm -hmm. it's not like I'll do that anyway. Yeah. Uh, but but that's what I mean. So when people are like, come on, be positive. I'm like, of oh, what? Come well, on, it's okay. The, no, no, but positive. like with that said, with that, like I'm I'm totally. I think that I realize what kind of situation that we're in, and I'm trying to take. I'm trying to stay as positive as possible, so I'm not trying to go into that dark place where it's like super negative. And I've been able to stay away from that for very long. But um, you, we don't know what this opening up of things is going to bring. So yeah, I'm worried. I have family. Yeah, I think the only thing is to be aware and be prepared. Yeah. Like what I say, like this is like a situation that you can either be zombie food or you can be the zombie like, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, these, these people who are constantly waiting for somebody else to tell them what to do. Those are the ones who are going to end up at zombie food. Because <laughs> zombie coming there like, what's your problem? <laughs> you know. Oh my god! But because imagine not being able to that's, drive. That's, that's the sort of thing. It's like everything in our pop culture, like all of the TV shows, everything for the past five years, movies. They're literally telling about the same thing, trying to make you realize what the hell is going on. And people well, <laughs> not to go, uh, use their brains for that. Yeah. Because me and my boyfriend, we always joke about that. So, where would you go the first thing when the zombies start coming? <laughs> it's like... No, honestly, think about it. What if, what if, um, what if global warming gets to go at the Earth and all of the ice melts and what if the water rises? Where would you go? Well, thank God I've seen the water world. You know, it's like <laughs> Boy Scouts start building those rafts. But I mean, it, I, I mean, the sort of thing is to always try to uh, work towards not to end up in the worst case scenario. Yeah. I think that's the sort of thing, rather than wait before it's too late. This is this for, this is for a fact, my mom has always said, said uh, to me, is that Mother Earth will always win. Whether the, the water, water race is up, if humans have to be wiped up, then we brought it onto ourselves as a whole, you know. I think I watched a little too much anime to... <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, to, to kind of, if one person has the, or if a few people get to decide what the destiny of the world is going to be, and if you have a opportunity to make sure that that could be positive in a way, wouldn't it be, I don't know, I guess I'm the kind of person who kind of like would make that effort to kind of be, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So yes, I do think about worst case scenario, what if water, what if we can no longer get clean water from the taps, which is going to happen eventually? 
what are we going to do with it in that situation? Like, is what's happening now a supposed natural reaction yeah. to that problem? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's so weird to live in this world and not know what's going on. Well, but it's always going to be the case. I think even even the idiots in, in charge of the things who think that they know what's going on, they do not know what's going on. Mm. Even though as much as they would want to say that, you know? It's like it's like I, I don't I don't I don't see anybody that was descended as God from the sky and say like I know this shit. I mean this I don't think that there's any knowing of the shit, but I think that there's Oh my god, like we've been saying I've I've actually said this for years. Like for the world to change the right people need to go. And with going I literally meant death. They just need to die. There's like a bunch of old white men that are running the shows for different things and they just have to go. Um, since this is happening now, are these big, you know, companies that are keeping the world moving, are they taking responsibility for the actions that they've taken? Or are they literally just going to keep vomiting this? Yeah, because that's not going to last. No. You know what I mean? Like, the way that we're doing that is not going to... Like, how are people afraid of so socialism and calling it communism? Like, it's crazy. Yeah, because I think this 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 shit this um, time I, I call this also like it's, it's a horrible time. It's also a time of great opportunity, and I think yes. people should open up their eyes. Yeah, realize that in in order of these massive companies that exploit a lot of people, a lot of nations, a lot of country, they're only based on capitalism. And the more us people pumping money into this shit keeps their machinery going. Do you exactly. know what I mean? it's, yeah, like, yeah. it's like when people are like, oh, I hate this, this, they have so much money. Oh, did you buy their makeup line? Or did you buy yes, their I did. I did. <laughs> you know, so Don't get me wrong. Yeah. No, no, I mean, I've, it's I've stopped. It. Out this. <laughs> exactly. Uh, exactly. In that sense. And I, and I mean, it's like that. I, I, I like very, very strong, strongly believe that every change starts from an individual level. Exactly. So, because if, if, if all of us don't collectively thinking alike, do it working together, we're gonna get out, get out of this. But if we if, if there's those couple of people who keep on like playing to their own drums like, no, I don't wanna do that, I don't wanna share this, I don't wanna do that, we're never gonna get anywhere. I mean the thing is that with the social distancing is just making it worse. You know what I mean? Like the the way that I kind of experience racism is that a lot of it's based on people's three assumptions and fears of black people. Yeah. So what happens a lot is that um, people will be afraid because they have no idea what you're doing and they want to know what you're doing. They think that they have the right to know. So I feel like the fear with that is becoming bigger now. Whereas in which where I was in Curacao, where we were really walking away from white people and kind of like, oh my god, like we need to be safe from you guys because you guys seem to be sick. Here it's just like, oh, you're black, so I'm just gonna take more distance from you because you must probably have it, which is the weirdest. Yeah, that thing. is that, that is just really. Weird. It's really, really weird. It's really weird because they, they see on TV that I'm not the one that's brought it here. Like it's been very, very clear. <laughs> yeah. So it's very, do you know what I mean? Like it's very strange. I need mean, to keep I stop calling it strangers. It's very racist that people ha are built that way, that they think like that. Um, and I think it's going to take us a while for really for us to really, really get out of it, even though we need to do it now. Like it's overdue. Yeah, it's always the one that there's always the, pe the it's the people want to uh, always blame somebody else. But and then in this this uh, social climate and this setting, it's unfortunately it's like it's always the black people. But for for me personally, because I I grew up in a society like when I was a kid, it was like. To be honest, I think I was I was 12 the first time I saw a black person. That was in school because we had a lot of uh, uh, immigrants that fle fled the war. There was a lot of uh, people from Somalia, a lot of people from Congo. So that was the first time, and that's what I grew up with, uh, with more like foreign kids than actual Finnish kids. And they were the cool kids, <laughs> not, not, not as white. <laughs> that I can tell you. But I, but I remember like for me, I, I saw the, the, the batting men in my own father who was white mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. so i never i never uh, learned that sort of sort of thing that or like i would have been grown up in this sort of like little bottle of not being un, like aware of all of the, the crap that happens in the world i need to grow up very very early so i never had that thank yeah. god that i i didn't learn like for me i actually get more scared of certain, certain white men that i see who are on drugs 
who are unpredictable, for example. Those are mm-hmm. my, my fear points. On well, the funny, the funny thing is, is like I talk about like anxiety is more what I can call it when I enter a white space, but it doesn't really, um, I don't really express it anymore in fear because I don't show fear to white people ever. Um, and you shouldn't, man. Like you no, shouldn't. no, 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 no. Not even that I shouldn't. I just, I, I don't really want to go there. Like it's like an emotion that, uh, like the horror, really the horror of it. Like to really. Like what I see when I see when they when it looks like when they kill people, it's um, it's not even out of pride. I kind of shut down really, um, and it kind of become really monotone because I've learned how to deal with certain situations. Yeah. In other times, I choose to fight. In other times, I choose not to. But um, most of the time, to kind of uh, I don't know, like to grow up in Europe, to not be from here, and to be here. Um, I completely understand what you say as well uh, when you mentioned the way that you grew up as well and how you have this notion from your parents as well. I have the same thing with men around me, but coming from both sides. Like I, 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 um, I made the car. Well, I, I found out one day that racism was just bluntly and plainly wrong. There's no way to, to explain or excuse it. Um, so the. So I kind of numbed it out, like the sound and the noise and the annoyance. You make like your own safe space. You go to places and people where you don't have to hear that as much. And then you have to like double up that as well with being gay. So there's a lot of like black um, communal living that I, I kind of missed out on um, because I was gay. And because in Holland, the community wasn't that big. Yeah, it's 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 uh, it's it's so so you know like I'm I'm so honored for you to hear you tell this, but also my heart breaks for you, and all of that. And I think uh, nobody should go through that. You know, it doesn't it doesn't matter whoever you are. To me, it's like I think the question here is like people killing people. I just like it shouldn't be about the color. It's just a question: Why do you have to kill? another person for me this is like the, the sort of thing I, I do not get it i never understood it like why would you go and kill somebody because you can i think you're like literally mentally ill that's how i, I mean see. i don't i think that we stopped uh, showing it happening as much as it happens a long time ago because it happens all the time um and we've kind of like become do you know what I mean? Like, not so much blunt, but kind of like unaware of the fact of how horrible it is to take life. But it happens really, really often for yeah. a numerous amount of reasons. Um, oh, this is so horrible and disgusting. But the other day, I was, re- <laughs> I was reading. Said, we don't have to go like too into it, but I, but I, I totally agree. But for me, it's always been. I always try to think about it, every single problem in a very objective way. Is yeah. it's like why, why there's no reason that you should. Uh, be able just to go and kill somebody. No reason. No. It doesn't matter what that what the hell it is. You know, like what? Why would you have to even go and think about that? It's like, yeah, you stole from me. It's it's not an excuse. You know, so honestly, you- not not to say like an eye for an eye, but I believe that people that rape people should really be de- like really, really, really deserve punishment. And I also yeah, believe people but- that murder people um, should also they also deserve a punishment. Do I think that we're doing it the right way now? Hell no. <laughs> no, no, it's no. Not, it's not like how it used to be. <laughs> but that's like how my bro- older brother always said to me, it's like never punch. Never throw the first punch. But if somebody punches you, you give it right a punch back. back. Yeah. yeah. So so that's that's how this gay kid was <laughs> brought up <laughs> by by like pack of wolves. That's ah. sure. um, but a big on mouth. A, but on a on a, a bit more positive note, we have about yes. eight minutes left. Um, how? Uh, where do you find the inspiration to do all of the great stuff? Uh, they will yes. do. <laughs> no, but I need to like, sort of sense that because I I believe that every every great artist. Uh, has known some danger. Otherwise, you won't be able to create. I think it's always present with us. That's very so, interesting. So, where, where do you find where, where do you find sort of um, on those moments when you feel like like this this really like took the wind out of me? But where do you where, what is your way to kind of keep on pushing forward? Um, I 
in terms of like what I do uh, in a physical sense, like in terms of what I create and the work that I create, it's very much. Um, um, I try to look for something that I consider original, and then uh, I really kind of focus on finding different components that I can put, like a formula that I can put together for it to become that as well. And I try to actually have as much of the different components that I fit into an idea be as unique as possible as well. So in terms of whom I work with, their story, um, I'm not being respectful with the fact that I'm either capturing their image or telling their story, or is it my story to tell? Um, all of these things really come into play for me now, um, which has really shifted my work very much from an outside perspective of me trying to beam something on other people to it being uh, me sharing an experience that I have with the people that I work with. Uh, yeah, I think I could call it that now, actually. Oh, that's great. That's I try to, yeah. No, but I tried... it's, it's, it's really beautiful to hear like the process because I think I think the more open we would be about that process, we would also understand that we don't always have to compete with each other. You know, there are places for all of us. Yeah. And we're all different and our approach is different. And that's why it, it makes the thing great what we do. For example, for me, the process is always emotional. Everything mm. that I do is based on how I feel. Mm -hmm. It's not about, of course, I'm, I always follow the brief, but it's always about how do I feel. There's always emotional undertone in every picture that I do. Of course, it's not always up to me, which makes me really fucking angry when that. Because I have this is the Why job. Do you take this generic <laughs> shit. I know that's not what I want, but you know, sometimes you have to do the compromise. It's not always in your hands, unfortunately. Maybe one, one, one day, one day, I'm, that's what I'm driving for. Um, I mean, that's basically what I'm doing now. I've taken all of the control to me and I will take responsibility if X, Y, or Z doesn't agree. Yeah. Um, but I will fight you. Like, we will, yeah. Yeah, but um, you have to have that. Like, I, I, I mean, it's like, what's the point of being there if you don't have an opinion? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I understand that I'm supposed to be respectful between, uh, within the bounds of things as well, and especially with working with artists, for example. But I think that there's, I think that, all of us need to understand that not everything is for everyone and certain things are just very personal like you said it's very yeah. emotional we are artists and we're sensitive about our shit if you may <laughs> but um it really is that like honestly if you're a creative person you can do anything that you put your mind to if you yeah. really think about it um and the biggest problem that we have is i think that we're looking too much at each other and judging each other than yeah. thinking about what we actually want to do uh and i think that that is something that um I see that more and more like younger people that just don't care. Um, but I am seeing them copy and paste stuff that I already did when I was a baby. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> in a way, that I'm, will always happen. That will always yeah, yeah, yeah. Happen. I'm, I'm totally there for that. But I do, um, the same way that I judge my peers and kind of feeling like they didn't do enough. Wow. Like, it's a perfect moment. I kind of, um, I don't judge them, but I do look at young people like, hey, you guys, like, I'm going to try to create as much space as I possibly can, but it's really up to you to then also do the work. I will help you get there, but you do have to like you know that you have to like, you have to phone for a reason. You can Google yeah. for a reason. You can get informed as much as you want to the entire day, every day. So please, you know, use your means for the right things and don't get sucked up into this Kardashianism or it's like, oh, whatever. Totally. I totally like, like I'm, I'm, yeah. That's another subject that we don't even have. Girl, to talk about. girl. Because I have a lot of things to say about that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, what, what I what I t tend to say to everybody who because I keep on getting this like, how did you do it? How did you, where did you go to school? I was like, I didn't go no school. It kind of happened. Uh, it shows me it was like one progression onto another. Always, if you compete with someone, compete with yourself. You are your worst enemy or your best friend. So focus on that. I've, and I think with with age and knowledge and experience, it comes power. I realize like I see my other peers doing something and they've been very successful. I'm just like, I don't get it, but that's why it's so great. <laughs> that would be ever, you know, you know what I mean? It's like, it's, you have to also understand that not everything is for you. Yeah. Like you said. But you yes. just have to respect it and understand where it comes from. And that's that's when you start realizing that why there is a place. And you don't have to be that. It doesn't exactly. Success doesn't come in one form. Exactly, yeah. No, I fully agree. I kind of just don't... Uh, I really try to applaud people's work as much as possible. If I like something, I like it. And 
I'll let you know. And if I don't, you will never know because there's no point in me telling you. Um, do you know what I mean? Like, if there's constructive racism, uh huh, constructive criticism that can take place. Oh my god, I don't even know if the latter exists. Um, if constructive racism, uh, <laughs> criticism, um, is due or if it's at its place, I'm always willing to do that. But I, I feel sometimes with people's creative, um, it's very personal. It's for them to kind of develop. If there's anything that they ever need in terms of help and a conversation, I'm completely there for it. Yeah, uh, totally. But if that's not what's being asked for, I tend to really like. If people like it, let people like it. Yeah, I mean, I they don't. A, they don't. You know. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I hate Elvis Presley. Like, ugh. Same. He's disgusting. Same. Um, I hate the glamorization of Marilyn Monroe. I think it's disgusting. Yeah, um, do you know what I mean? So I tend to look at things and I tend to assess as well. Where does it come from? Like, self or the value of the same? Yeah, but for, you know? for me, it's like on those two people. The only thing what I actually see is not the, the atypical glamour. I just see it sort of like how they got sucked into that. It's a horror and, story. And it's horrible. Was, that was the end of those two people. So, and, and not in the nicest way, like you know, how, how much of people <laughs> want to be like, oh, they said they were so glamorous. I really, I, I really doubt that. You yeah. know, what happens behind closed doors wasn't pretty. But even so. Jean-Paul Gaud, babe, like I look back at that and I'm like, well, Jean-Paul, no, but it's a process, and I think we've, we've all been there, you know. I think yeah. I think that's the sort of thing. It's like my mom always says, like, uh, you will leave this earth when you're ready. And the, the great people who left too early, they were too pure to be here to begin with. <laughs> you know, I think it's a weird thing. I'm not religious, but it's it's kind of like nice to think. Like, for me, one of those people is Aaliyah. You know, I, I mm. think about it. it was one of the greatest artists to me ever. Do you, can I say something about that? I have like actually a really hard time listening to her music right now because of the documentary. Yeah. Like I, AJ Nothing But A Number is... I, I, I haven't played it ever since. Yeah. I, play, I tend to play some of her other songs, but like I, it actually hurts uh, to think about... Uh, oh, sorry. Like yeah, I refuse to play... I refuse... Sorry, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah but, that, but that's what it is. And, and, and it's like... I think collectively as, as humanity, we have to start thinking about that there's a lot of things that happen all the time and we have to start to be a bit more aware, not buy into all of this crap and start questioning. You know, it's about like survival skills here as well. That it seems to be like we've completely become flaccid throughout this uh, sort of uh, so-called evolution of, of people. So, but yeah. It's, but you know what I mean? It's like I've, I've thought about this type of stuff a lot and yeah. tried, to, tried to kind of keep myself aware of things and also being very aware of my choices, my decisions, the things that I react to things. Why am I reacting this way? Where is this coming from? And, and you know, and through that, better myself. Yeah. You know, of course, but like, we're, I'm never going to get there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I actually, I think that there's a lot of people that are. It's just that a lot of things come into play. Do you know what I mean? Like, if, um, if you're mixed race and you're, and like one of my friends, she's, um, one of her parents is white and one of her parents is black. Um, her one parent, a black parent, didn't really care about her culture, her black culture. So her dad educated her on her culture. For her to kind of like, it's, I think that there's so much intersex with everything that we're talking about and, and all of these kind of like connected things as well, um, that we really need to look at in, look at it in a way, way broader scale and really kind of like learn how to dissect certain things to kind of like really, really cool certain, uh, kind of like stop to repeat certain, certain ways of, of being or living. So, um, I'm hoping that we get the, the chance to do that. I feel like a lot of people have this time at home now. Um, at least some people have the luxury and uh, they have the time to, to think as, as well because it, yeah. it's us the ones with the luxury it's up to us I think it's up to us to do the right thing to make sure that the rest of us also make it yeah totally 100% yeah. because because what's the point it's like you're not doing anybody favors it's, no. like, it's almost like the same like when I've always said that if I become a millionaire I would never want to be a millionaire at all what's the <laughs> point of having all of the fun if you can't share it yeah. <laughs> It's, the amount of shoes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would have a lot of shoes. But, okay, we have about five minutes before the, the, the timer goes on. Okay. So, so that means uh, that 
it's uh, time for the notorious quick fire round of questions. Okay, this girl, yeah. Fun. This is fun, light. Uh, it's either or, whatever. The floor is yours. How okay. Do you that? It's, it's nothing serious. So let's get it going. Hey. Neon or primary colors? Neon. Zebras or cheetahs? Ooh. Mm. Cheetah. Audio or visual? Mm. I see through sound, so there you go, audio. <laughs> uh, beer or cider? I don't see feel through sound. Beer or? Cider. Cider, definitely. Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I hate beer. <laughs> oh, this I is like the third vodka. time. Um, heels or flats? Mm, heels. Fuck a flat. Club or house party? House. Fashion <laughs> or art? Art. <laughs> Family man or a lonely wolf? Mm. Family. Melody or beat? Beat. Long or short hair? Well, wow. <laughs> I'm actually <laughs> never gonna cut it again. I'm never gonna cut it again. I'm never uh, cutting it again, ever. Apples or pear? That's pears. Oh, thank you. I got it done in Curacao. Um, pears. I oh, wow. Okay, it's the last time. I love a pear. Uh, since you're in uh, an Amsterdam uh, local. Uh, mm -hmm. Joint or a coffee cake? Joint, babe. I, I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, joint. <clears throat> uh, to dance or to DJ? Ooh, ooh to DJ. <laughs> Speed of light or the ability to fly? The ability to fly. Love or lust? <laughs> <laughs> Love. Wealth or happiness? Happiness. And that concludes the <laughs> quick fire round of episode 17 of Morse Course by Bessa. We have about a couple of minutes left. Is there anything that you would want to say to people who are still with us? Um, Like a little, little pick me up or guide, <laughs> spiritual guide. <clears throat> um. Right now, I'm kind of telling everyone that I'm staying positive and staying safe. Um, staying positive and productive, actually. Because we do need to move. We need to kind of like make an effort to make sure that we don't really kind of get down on ourselves way too much in a situation. Um, I think it's really important to understand that however you're going to survive this, you need to do it for yourself. And you need to kind of like understand that you have a responsibility in that. However we come out of this is how you come out of this as well, if we come out of this. So take responsibility for the things that you need to do, not so much the things that you have to do. Take them day to day and learn how to take care of yourself. Because this current situation that we're in, our governments will only help us if we're partaking in our government. And that means taking care of your business. So for those of you who don't know how to do that, please get in touch with whomever. Go on YouTube, try and do that as much as possible. And for those of you who don't have a home at the moment, I hope you're safe. Because there's a lot of people out there who don't have a place to stay. Yeah. Um, I don't really know how to, because I'm, I'm, I'm in this with all of you. Well, with all of you, that's not the case. But we're all in, we're not even in this together. We're not in this together at all. We're all in the same shitstorm. That's the best way to put it. Um, and I think that the best thing that we can do is... Um, um, inform ourselves on how we're going to survive and not so much on what we have to do in the now. Think 10 months ahead, what are we going to do? And be kind. We have literally 25 seconds before we're going to be cut off. And amen to that. I love be kind. Yeah. I think that that's the most be important kind thing. Is cool. That's what I'm always saying. <laughs> you want to be the cool cat. Thank you so much for this. It was Thank you for having me. Pleasure. Thank and you for having any, me. And anybody who missed this, don't worry. This is recorded and it will be coming to you very soon on our yes. in YouTube. So you will never get rid of us. Uh, have a great weekend, John Paul. Thank you so much.